the Troy John Doe, identified as Jack Legenert. In June of 1984, skeletonized remains were found near a farm outbuilding on a property near Troy, Missouri. The remains were that of a man, and he was estimated to be 40 to 80, which, of course, is pretty wide and almost renders the age unhelpful. But they did know he was around 6 foot tall to 6 foot 2. As I record this, I notice I didn't put the conversion on the heights, and I'm trying to get better on this, but you will find that on the screen now. The clothing he was wearing is described as being high-end formal wear, and this included black slip-on dress shoes, brown dress socks, and a black Bill Blass pea coat, and a gray Bill Blass suit with red pinstripes. He was found lying against the west wall of the well house next to a water tank. The lock on this was broken off in this particular well house, and this was described as being on the Flynn Farm, which is located off Highway F, approximately five miles east of Highway 61. They believed that the man had been there for around six months before he was discovered. Along the way, they were able to perform what is now considered traditional DNA testing. This is the type of testing that they put in CODIS, and it's just compared to other samples that come through the database. It's far different than genetic genealogy, and genetic genealogy can't be done with this particular type of DNA. This is why people already in CODIS usually need to still go through the motions of being exhumed once again and new processing for DNA done. In this case, Othram took charge of processing his DNA and they used their own in-house investigation team. Now, of course, this isn't always the result. Othram has their own funding arm for doing this, but they also process samples for the DNA Doe Project, which will usually use their own in-house volunteer team. In this case, they worked with the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office, eventually calling in family members, requesting samples to compare with his remains. By this time, they strongly suspected this man was, in fact, Jack Langenert. The official identification came through in March of 2023. The investigation and follow-up of DNA testing confirmed that the decedent was, in fact, Jack. He was 50 when he disappeared in 1982 and he was from St. Louis, Missouri. At the time, his vehicle was located, but not in the area where he was found. It was instead found at the St. Louis airport, which, of course, was likely to throw suspicion off of him being that John Doe, if he was ever found. And it worked. Nobody suspected that the remains of the man found near Troy, Missouri, belonged to Jack. Troy, Missouri is about 55 miles or 89 kilometers away from St. Louis. At the time, Jack was working as a real estate agent when someone chose to take his life via a GS wound in the back of his skull. Now law enforcement needs people to come forward with information to try to discover who did this and why. No one knows if it was someone he knew or perhaps someone he met through his business. Please call the number on the screen if you have any information at all. Jack went unidentified for 38 years. Had he survived, he would be 88 years old today. The McAllister Doe Couple, 1995, identified as Brian and Rachel Burr. This case was solved in part because a young woman used TikTok to try to find out what happened to her parents. She was just a small child when her parents, Brian Burr and Rachel Burr, disappeared. At the time, Brian was 23 and Rachel was just 21. Her daughter Dallas was three years old when she last saw her parents. They had gone out of town to visit family and instead, they seemingly dropped right off the face of the earth. Dallas spent her entire life wanting to know what happened to them. She first turned to TikTok about two years ago when she heard of a successful account of someone doing the same a link to her TikTok can be found in the description below. She shared on TikTok that in 2000, she and her brother were considered orphans by the state of Texas, and their custody would go to their maternal grandmother. As a result, they would end up moving to Ohio, but she always stayed in contact with some relatives, and she'd hoped that her parents would show up and she would be able to reconnect. 
Dallas would say all she had was an occasional story mentioned about her parents. She didn't know a lot about them. Her paternal relatives found her when she was 17, and she says this is a good thing. She had a rough life growing up and would say that she cried almost every night since her preteen years, yearning for parents that loved her, saying she didn't have parental figures at all. She just lived with people who were genetically related to her, and that that's the extent of her connections to those who raised her. It's really sad. The prevailing assumption at the time was that they were young and overwhelmed and that they walked away by choice, which is pretty offensive in the end when you consider what the truth was. But it happens. And I think instinct is not to believe someone had passed away. In one TikTok, Dallas shared that she wants her parents to know that she forgives them for leaving her. She just wanted to find them and have a relationship now. She later shared that a big part of this was hope that a stranger might be better at research than she was and would be able to locate them for her. But instead, she got a call from a cold case detective in Oklahoma stating that an unidentified couple was found in Oklahoma and that the genealogy pointed to distant family members of Dallas. She would be provided with recreations of the Jane and John Doe couple, and she immediately noted a pattern of Jane Doe's teeth that matched her mother's in photos, just as the John Doe had similar cheekbones and a jawline. It wasn't the answer she'd been hoping for, but it still looked like she found an answer nonetheless. It turns out her parents cut off contact not because they made a choice, but because they could not contact her. She went ahead and provided her own DNA for comparison, but after looking at the recreations, she had no personal doubt that it was them, that she finally found her parents. In September of 2022, she had confirmation that her worst fears were correct. It was a blow she would later describe as earth-shattering. She said she spent her whole life looking for them, when the reality is that it was a crime from nearly three decades before that was the source of her pain. The COD is what I will just describe as a GS. So far, the person or persons who did this have not been identified, much less the reason for it happening. It has since come out that in March of 1995, Brian and Rachel Burr took a road trip to visit extended family. What is remembered by the family is that they made it to their destination and that they were last seen by some relatives in Pennsylvania. It's believed that on their way home, their route took them through Oklahoma, which is where the crime happened. We know now that on April 9, 1995, their remains were found near Crowder, Oklahoma. Because they had matching wedding bands, it was believed they were a married couple, but whatever happened to them, it appears happened at another location, and they were then transported to where they were found. Dallas shared that her family did not report the couple missing. Dallas began looking for them as soon as she became an adult, never finding a clue as to what happened. In an interview with the news station, she would say, I'm 30 years old and I don't even remember my parents. They've been gone so long and I've spent my whole life being sad about it. It has impacted me in ways I can't even begin to articulate in an interview like this. She went on to say that they were barely into their 20s, so she had always believed they didn't have time to develop into people yet, saying, all I knew was their names and that my mom really liked to play the saxophone. Dallas has been very open with how her parents' disappearance affected her. She said that when she was young, she experienced a range of health issues, and she believes it was complicated by not knowing her medical history. She said that her grandmother claimed the kids not in order to take care of them, but rather to have two kids to be raised as caregivers for the maternal grandmother. Once Dallas became an adult, she had sons of her own, and they, too, experienced similar health problems. She's clear that the anger continues to simmer. She wants whoever took her parents' life to know that he or she stole from Dallas and her brother the ability to have a childhood filled with love. She needs answers, and she released another TikTok saying, We are still trying to get information that they may have missed. The case isn't solved. We've got as much information as we could from the known friends and family. But if there's anyone out there who knew my mother, Rachel Ann Burr, and my father, Brian Eugene Burr, if they have any information, even if you think it's inconsequential, it will help. Brian and Rachel Burr went unidentified for 27 years. They were found 170 miles, or 
273 kilometers away from where they went missing. Had they lived the life they deserved, they would be 48 and 50 years old today. Huge thanks for watching all the way to the end, and a big thanks to all of you who consistently like and comment on the videos. Whether you leave a full comment or an emoji, it makes a huge difference. The whole dance with YouTube is hard sometimes. I gain only about 350 subs a month. So if you consistently watch my videos, maybe take a moment to subscribe. It's a huge push toward the videos being suggested to new people. The next goal is 20,000. Thanks everyone for watching. Take care of yourselves and each other.